Hello, my name is Kevin from Moonlight Mantids, and uh, I just want to make a video today and talk about a p particular species, a, a very hardy and uh, fa a very hardy species, a favorite of mine. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, adult males, uh, subadults, uh, nymphs, ooth, um, adult females. I'm going to try to piss one off so we can see the nice little display that they make. Um, this is a pretty bulletproof species. It's the uh, F. It's the twig mantis, um, Popa spruca, and um, we will uh, um, just go over some facts and uh, figure some things out. Uh, right away, I'm going to say this is a, uh, an arid species, so you're not going to water them. You don't want to spray them directly. Um, the best thing to do is maybe give it a slight, slight misting once or twice a week um, in their container, not directly. Um, you can keep them on no substrate or um, a uh, simple paper towel or something will do. Um, you can do some sort of a sort of arid, cool kind of um, set up if you want to. It, it, if you wanted to do something like a, a live setup, you could do something with like some succulent plants, no cactuses, and um, just uh, keep them uh, fairly dry, um, especially the adults because uh, they're not going to shed anymore and uh, humidity seems to be their only issue. Um, they do need a slight bit of humidity. Um, I think the rainy season is what makes them hatch and then of course it helps them with their their malts and things and helps them grow. But um, I've, I witnessed them drinking water uh, very rarely. It's not very common for them. Uh, like I said, it's a nice arid species. Um, it's native to Africa, uh, South Africa to be exact, but it's pretty, it's pretty, it has a pretty wide range. Um, the container should be well ventilated. You want a lot of ventilation. And um, the best thing you can do for adults, especially if you're mating them, which are kind of communal. Um, I have some females and males that live together just fine, and sometimes some males and females that just will kill each other. Or, I mean, the, the females will kill everyone in there. So, uh, the females can be a little aggressive. They, you know, I, I would not call this a communal species, although some people have success with that. I tried it, and about three-quarters of the communal male-female pairs I tried to set up as adults. Um, three-quarters got destroyed, so, the, you know, and uh, some of them didn't even uh, get a chance to mate, so I would say they're not communal. I, you, you can disband that rumor right now. Um, and uh, the, oh, oh, about the youth. I'll talk about the youth real quick. Uh, the youth incubate between 70 and 85 degrees um, with uh, every other day misting when they're uh, nymphs for about... Uh, uh, four to, uh, oh, 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 uh, every other day misting for the youth, and I would say, uh, for the nymphs too, very light misting for both, uh, the youth and the nymph, the growing nymph, and, um, it, uh, will take about four to eight weeks for the youth to hatch, and it's gonna hatch about a 70 to 150 black-looking nymphs. Um, the cool thing about the, the twig mantis is that it can also tolerate cool and dry areas, so they can kind of, uh, cool down a bit, without really affecting them. It's just going to hurt their, it's just going to slow them down and, uh, you know, hurt their growth. It's, uh, they're just basically going to sort of pause a little bit. It'll really, really slow them down. You get a lot, a lot of time out of them, out of them if you keep them cool and dry, just, uh, not humid. And then, uh, they, uh, it'll stretch out their lifespan quite a bit. Anyway, um, it's, is a pretty common species. Uh, you can find uh, more and more, a lot more people working with them. I have a ton right now. This year is like, the year of the twig mantis. I have a ton of these things and I'm basically uh, able to uh, disperse quite a few so I'm pretty happy about it. Um, breeding wise they're not the most difficult to uh, to breed either um, just as long as you wait the uh, the two weeks bef uh, two weeks after the male has molted and two to three weeks after the female has molted before they're both ready to mate. And then of course remember to keep your female busy giving her a lot of food items and she'll go ahead and mate for you. And I'm going to show you all the different variations right now. Hold on. Ooh, sorry about that. So right here, we have our nice female. It's been sitting on this cork here this entire time. Let me pull her into the light for you a bit. Check her out. Nice and fat, getting ready to lay her ooth. She's already been mated, and her male survived. He's a nice male. Check that out. That coloration, it looks just completely, completely like a, like a twig. Um, just ex an excellent mimicking species. Really, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, a definite must-have for uh, for beginners and uh, you know experts alike. Everyone's everyone's uh, raised a few twigs. They're definitely worth it. Let's get a little top view here. Let's see, uh, 
We know she's a female because she has six segments and because she's huge and a lot more robust than the males. Man, that's amazing. She blends in so well. I like that little coloration. Oh, hello. Oh, she's looking at us. That's a beautiful picture. But uh, the inside of their arms have a little bit of a coloration on them. Oh, are you getting sick of us? You gonna hide from us now? Let's see if I can see. There she is. I think she can hide. All right. Let's look at the male here. Right there. This is the male. Very obviously uh, sexually dimorphic. They uh, they vary quite a bit. All right. There you go. Nice and slender male. Big long antenna going like crazy. He's uh. Could probably mate another female tonight if he wanted. Gonna do a little arm movement there. He's talking to me. Let's see here. Come on, buddy. Let's everybody let you have a good look at you. Alright. There you are. Aren't you nice? Oh, yeah. Put your arms out. Yep. That's a nice boy. About uh, half of these males get killed right away by the females during mating, but uh, there's the other half though. They're just they're just experts. They uh, get right on, do their business, and, uh, and you have piles and piles of uh, beautiful little mantids. Let's see. I'm gonna leave them alone for a minute, and then I'm gonna try to piss them off. Anyway, right here next to us we have. Um, these really nice looking, um, oh wow, you're not looking at anything. Sorry, sorry, I'm trying to set up stuff. I'll give it, I'll, uh, just, here, hold on. All right. This male took about five or six months to raise with a lot of food and a lot of nice uh, warm heat. Um, try to keep them uh, above uh, mid-70s, uh, high 70s to uh, low 80s is uh, the best. And make sure you're dropping the temperature to give them a break a little bit at night. Same goes for the nymph and the youth. Um, but here is a nymph, right here. This is an L3, so it's already got that little twiggy shape. All right, that looks good. It's got his molt over there in the corner. Now I keep these in two ounce cups, dry, no nothing in there. Um, I just missed them once in a while. A little bit of fine tool on the top. Um, for uh, it, it helps a lot with. Uh, for their for their sheds, it's really fine, and uh, they uh, they don't have any problems shedding out of these. Um, I don't really worry about a substrate because substrates can hold a lot of moisture, and I really don't want them shedding too much. Um, not shedding too much. I'm sorry. I don't uh, I don't want enough. I don't want too much humidity because uh, they can they can die from that. Same as like bud wings and stuff. You really arid species. I don't tend to do much substrate. More like uh, net, uh, net mesh cages, just because. Um, I don't want them uh, to uh, to die. They just really don't like the humidity too much. What you doing, guy? All right. He seems pretty friendly, so I don't really want to do this. But I would like to show you what happens when you piss him off. Um, um, hold on one second. Where did those tongs go? Um, hold on one second. I'm going to leave you here with him. I'm going to hunt down my tongs. I'm always losing my tongs. I just had like ten pair. Well, that's alright. I have a whole cabinet full. I always forget too. There's a ton of tongs in here. Dig some out. Okay, there we go. All right, all right. Are you ready? Let me pick up the camera again. Point it at my nice male here, and I'm just gonna irritate him a little bit, and uh, just kind of poke him. And one of the things he's gonna do, he's uh, gonna try to mimic a little bit, so I don't mess with him. And I'm not trying to hurt him, but I'm gonna poke him a little bit. And uh, he should either try to run or that sort of fight or flight response. 
Oh, he's under the log. Okay, you don't want to be under there with her. Oh, there she is. Okay, you gonna hide or are you gonna fight? Come on, guy. Come on, guy. No. Mm, he's a little bit of a scaredy cat. I guess he's not gonna do it. Um, there is something cool I could show you. Two seconds. Um, I do have a female in here with a male, and she is laying an ooth right now. She was mated a few days ago by this male, and she seems to tolerate him, and he's real curious to see what she's up to all the time. I think they've mated a couple times. But here she is. They're in this nice sort of uh, uh, mesh cube. They're becoming very popular for mantids, especially these arid species really kind of depend on them as adults, and she's just, if you see there, she's going to work. Yep. Alright. Get sort of a side shot of this. Sticking right to the cage. I'm going to let that dry for a couple days, and then I'm just going to take a razor blade and very gently sort of uh, scrape off the, the residue on this side and then then go ahead and remove the youth from the other side there you go hi mama hopefully I'm not bothering you yeah I have another female in here that um, has been mated to she killed her male though she's not very nice alright let me get back over here where'd my male go? he's still hiding Okay. See, I'm gonna try to get a reaction out of him one more time. Let me get him back on this log, though. Come on, you did it earlier. Show me your tough guy. Nope, he just wants to keep going into that twig pose and hide from me. That's okay. I won't mess with you much more than that. Um, sometimes you can just scare them by accident and they'll throw their wings right out. And uh, it's it's really quite pretty. If I get pictures, I'll post them. So anyway, I'll put this camera back and talk to you guys for a second. Hopefully that focuses. I don't know if it will. Oh my gosh, look. I don't have my jewelry in. I must have forgot. Anyway, um, so I uh, hope you guys enjoy that video. Really simple species. Um, let me just go over a few things again. About seven, uh, 75 to uh, 150 uh, nymph. Um, also, the uh, the females um, can lay up to, I think, uh, three or four pretty easily. Just make sure after uh, mating, you're giving the males and the females lots of water. After the females lay, you're going to power feed them, give them lots and lots of different kinds of foods, and then a lot, uh, give them water, offer a lot of water for them to drink. And then um, just uh, make sure you keep them uh, well ventilated and dry. And this is a pretty bulletproof species. I mean, I got, I'm sitting on a ton of them right now. They're pretty prolific. So it's a good beginner. And then, of course, just because how beautiful they are, um, people like to keep them, um, even if they've been keeping them a while. One of the first species I got into, and because of uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, be them being so simple to take care of, it's, uh, you really just you can't go wrong. So uh, if you're looking to get into the hobby or even try your hand at breeding a little bit, this is a species uh, I would definitely go for. You know, if you can, if you go a few days, um, I mean a week or two without watering, they don't seem to notice or mind. And then the uh, same thing goes for feeding. You can leave for about a week and you will have no die-offs. Um, as long as they're uh, past about the L3, L4 stage, they can go quite a while without feedings. They're living in a pretty arid environment. They, sometimes they don't eat every day and uh, they just seem to... Uh, to slow down. Uh, remember, if you keep them cool and dry, their metabolism goes down, and then uh, they uh, you can spread out their life quite a bit. So I hope you like this video. Remember to subscribe. Um, you can also just visit uh, www.moonlightmantidsllc.com um, and ask any questions you want. Leave any comments below um, for future videos and species you want to learn more about. I'm going to knock a few of these videos out today, and then uh, also I have an art contest winner for the next few. Um, oh, look at that. You can see my uh, nice uh, cage set up there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Looks purple on camera. 
It's not, though, I don't think. I'm a little colorblind, I can't tell. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Bye!